Well, I migrated into sculpture over many years, and initially it started through um, what I call flat art, <laughs> which is drawing and painting. Slowly over time, uh, the third dimension, uh, another dimension wanted to come in, so I started making things and stone carving, and it was a natural progression. As a child, I, I drew a lot, and that's something that never left me, really. So drawing has been a, um, you know, underlying practice for pretty much all my life. And it just naturally evolved into sculptural work, you know, stone carving, first the soft stone and then the harder stones. I realised when I, um, you know, wander around my property and into my sheds and things, I have a very long accumulation of detritus and create a practice over a lifetime. So I'm very blessed and I've, um, I've been very fortunate. Um, I wound up on the Kapiti Coast more through, um, not so much by design, more through accident. I followed a girlfriend to this area and, and I sort of resisted living here in a way um, because I was attracted to parts of the South Island. And in fact, I lived in the South Island off and on for years. Slowly, slowly, um, my roots went down into the community and into this place. Um, I have a comfortable studio now. Um, it took many, many years to get to that. And so I've become quite happy in this physical location. And the ocean is always inspirational, having the horizon to sort of stare out, having some space to um, stare and contemplate the horizon is, is always kind of healing. I uh, like the way I approach st a piece of stone or something. It's, um, it's probably a process of evolution. There's, I know people that have designed their lives in a very calibrated fashion. I work outdoors a great deal and it's great when the sun's shining and we've got the great weather because most of what I do is too dusty and noisy to do it in a confined space. I think my process is more um, you know, this point leads to the next point, which then uh, leads to the next point. So it's a sort of a just flowing with circumstances and conditions. I've always sort of had a great regard for the creative process, in whatever form that is, you know, whether it's music or writing or painting or drawing or sculpture or whatever. I find it very soul destroying to work in a dull, repetitive way. Many people are, have to in order to survive, and I, I'm, I guess you have to sacrifice some aspects uh, in early in your life. I think one thing triggers the other. It's an evo evolution. I'll just grab that. It's a journey into the unknown, and that way it keeps life uh, exciting and you know rich. There's the odd uh, commission project that comes up, and so there's a on the side. There's always drawing going on. But um, one thing leads to the other, and, and so one footstep informs the next, and that's how it works. For example, the, the drawings behind me um, are just, uh, they're kind of whimsical doodles that um, I've done in between other projects, and I've been developing that as a, as a as a project, it, it becomes a project in itself. Sometimes I get up in the morning and think, how am I going to make a buck today? And uh, I have to rattle the money tree and my sole inspiration in those times is just for the next dollar. We live in a material world and working for financial profit is definitely one of the motivations, but it's really good to have a space that's sacred and. Uh, where you can just play and enjoy yourself as a creative human being and make some artefacts that come from that place that, that aren't necessarily serving the machine. I get laughter, you know, regularly throughout the day. I'm a fairly social person, so I do like to um, uh, hang around and talk shit with others and, uh, or, or maybe something, something other than just... Um, shallow gossip, you know, maybe some, some uh, exchange at some depth with somebody if it, if it goes that way. But I, yeah, I enjoy the company of others. Welcome to the rooftop world. 
to my rooftop world where the ascended master sits. Allah, Buddha himself. You know, you start a process with a stone, for example, start a carving, you know, you're in a flow and um, you don't really, and, and slowly the piece starts to have its own identity and all you've got to do is get out of the way and surrender and allow it to go where it needs to go and if you can not interfere too much, I mean obviously you're on the tools, There's, this body is operating the tools but the, um, I'm talking about stone carving here, that has its own identity and it needs to be respected you need to sort of not interfere with where it needs to go, what it's trying to say and the expression that comes through. So a lot of it is just starting a process and then allowing it to flow through you. It's kind of like channeling I suppose. It's, there's a lot of romantic myths around art making and I think you have to have a real fire in the belly to um, want to do it because um, you know, we live in a consumer culture and if you don't have the resources to participate then, you know, it can be a hard road to hoe and I, kids should, some, some kids absolutely follow your passion to hell with it, even if it means um, um, going without bloody near everything. But for most of the people coming through the tertiary education system, they need to find a foothold in the machine in order to survive. Uh, I probably don't do enough walking and stuff but you know because I work with my body that um, has its own um, that helps to keep the thing uh, reasonably good shape it's getting um, it's getting old now the joints are getting warm <coughs> but, um, I'm still okay